So again, my bio, and I put my uh, email address up there if anyone's interested in contacting me via email. So this uh, talk is uh, Famous Couples of Kentucky, Two Personalities Who Made a Difference in Kentucky, or mainly there are a lot of Louisville references here, but it's two individuals, partners, if you will, that are pretty notable or distinctive here in, in the area that hopefully everyone's familiar with. I start off with our state symbol that has two people on it. United we stand, divided we fall. Sometimes I think we're more divided than we are <laughs> united on at times. But uh, here are some of the other sorts of uh, symbols down below, more historical in nature. When, when did the, uh, the symbol come? Uh, that I do, we uh, Civil War? Uh, that I do not know. I know we became a state in 1792, so I'm guessing the motto and all somewhat came probably early 1800s, but I don't know the whole history of that. But I would think prior to the Civil War. So speaking of the Civil War, perhaps the most two of the most famous people as far as couples are concerned are Abraham Lincoln and Mary Todd. Here's some of uh, Lincoln's um, demographics. Yes, yeah, fairly tall. He's two inches taller than I was, believe it or not. He was <laughs> up there. And just talked about some of the things that he did. He really was somewhat unsuccessful in life on a variety of things. He just happened to become president. And then Mary Todd. That's pretty dirty. And they, you know, she's gotten, unfortunately, a bad rap because of uh, some of the things that happened after uh, Lincoln was killed about her being somewhat demented and all that. But basically a lot of it dealt with her financial struggles. Back then, when the husband passed away, the women did not have really a support structure for them, and especially a president's wife. There really was no uh, salary, if you will, that they were given. Uh, so she was somewhat distressed, if you will, about all of that. But she was very well educated, spoke fluent French, as it says there. Died at an early age, unfortunately. She dated both Douglas and Lincoln. That's correct, <laughs> yeah. I like that. <laughs> there they are. Oh, let me get that up there. Um, Lincoln was uh, friends with Joshua Fry Speed, uh, lifelong friends. Lincoln came and stayed with Speed in 1841, August of 1841. So uh, Joshua Fry and Fanny Speed, uh, this is their uh, grave site in uh, Cave Hill Cemetery. Neither one of them, they did not have any children. So uh, uh, they were actually uh, uh, buried in the uh, Speed family plot here. George Rogers Clark was good friends with Thomas Jefferson. Of course, uh, yeah, Jefferson sent Clark here for the Falls of the Ohio, protected during the Revolutionary War. Meriwether Lewis and William Clark, again, very well-known couple. Uh, the Lewis and Clark expedition. The Hill Sisters, another good couple. They wrote the famous Happy Birthday song, mm -hmm. Patty and Mildred Hill. School teachers? Uh, uh, Patty was the uh, kindergarten teacher, as I've been reprimanded. She was early childhood educator, as they now call her. And then Mildred was a uh, musician. She uh, wrote all the music and all. And they, together they wrote, I think, over 400 early childhood educated songs. One of them was called Morning to You, which they adapted to Happy Birthday to You uh, for uh, one of their friends. By the way, I was just recently in Hawaii, and they sang the Happy Birthday song in Hawaiian <laughs> to someone that was there in the audience. So, uh, and I've been in Italy, where they've sung it in it Italian. I think it's the most sung song uh, in the world right now. Someone's singing it every day. Yeah. Y'all may have sung it here. 
recently. Good morning to you. That's correct. You live in our places. Oh, no. <laughs> This is the uh, Caldwell Sisters. This is their grave site in Cave Hill Cemetery. Very beautiful sculpture there. I think this is Carrera marble, if I'm not mistaken. But anyways, beautiful. Uh, and the Caldwell Sisters were uh, very wealthy. Uh, their parents died at an early age and they inherited the money. They lived primarily in Europe, but when they passed away, they were reburied here in Louisville. They owned a lot of land here where Bowman Field is today. They owned that land. They owned land in the Shelby Park neighborhood. Uh, but the Caldwell Sisters, a lot of people are familiar with them due to their gravesite in Cave Hill. Uh, I always admired this uh, gravesite in Cave Hill Cemetery, the Shuttleworths. You have Moni and, J and James Shuttleworth. Uh, and so the story behind this is, who was James Shuttleworth? Why did he have such a nice memorial here in Cave Hill Cemetery? So I did a little Googling, and the first thing that popped up was Titanic. I said, well, that's interesting. What do they have to do with the Titanic? Turns out that uh, James Shuttleworth owned a clothing store in Louisville. He was over in Europe buying clothes for his store, coming back to the United States on the a recovery ship, the Carpathia, and he gave money to some of the widows there on board the ship. So he actually was there involved in that whole Titanic uh, situation. But anyways, he has a very nice gravesite in Cave Hill. There's the Shuttleworth. Very classical design. And there's their gravesites. To my knowledge, they did not have any children or else they're not buried there in the family plot. Uh, this is another great uh, my memorial in Cave Hill Cemetery, the Sh Satterwhite Memorial. Preston Pope and Florence Brokaw Satterwhite. That's their um, inscriptions on the Satterwhite Memorial. It's one of the more lovely memorials in Cave Hill. It was designed based on Marie Antoinette's Temple of Love in Versailles, France. How do we say Versailles in Kentucky? Versailles. Versailles, that's correct. But anyways, one of the more picturesque statues, uh, memorials in Cave Hill. It's very scenic. Let's talk about the Colonel Sanders and John Y. Brown. Um, Colonel Sanders had come up with his chicken, but uh, John Y. Brown really turned it into the worldwide global enterprise that it is today. <clears throat> the chicken. Yes. I was just in Hawaii and they have KFCs there. Mm -hmm. They have KFCs everywhere. In fact, I think KFC is one of the most popular restaurants in China, if I have that right. correct. There's some of the Colonel's related stuff, but again, they were a, a partnership between John Y. Brown and Colonel Sanders. And then Colonel Sanders was married to Claudia, Claudia Sanders. Of course, her dinner house out there in Shelbyville, which I think has gone through several uh, ownership transitions recently. And at the grave site there in Cave Hill, they were both buried there, Claudia and the Colonel. Colonel Sanders actually was not a Kentuckian. He was a Hoosier. He was born in uh, Henryville, Indiana. He wasn't really a military colonel, he was an honorary Kentucky colonel. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, John Y. Brown, who later became governor, was married to Phyllis George Brown, who was Miss America. Golly, it's been 53 years ago? Mm. That just doesn't seem right. Oh. There they are. They were one of the great couples of Kentucky. John Y. Brown, I think, just passed away last year, if I have that right. And Phyllis George passed away a few years ago. Mm. Heather French and Steve Henry. Heather French Henry and Steve Henry. Heather French won the uh, Miss, America. Miss America. I forgot the date on that. I want to say... Uh, it was in the early 2000s, like 2002 or something in that neighborhood. Sounds about right. I know we're too late, but we want to see it anyway. That's fine. We're still going through the second presentation. Okay. Ah, uh, and Danny. Uh, oh, Danny and Susan Sweeney Crumb. Uh-huh. 
great pair. Uh, Susan was a newscaster here in Louisville. And of course, Denny, the famous uh, UofL basketball coach who passed away just in the last, well, within the last year. By the way, his grave site is right adjacent to Muhammad Ali's grave site in Cave Hill. Uh, this is uh, Mary Keenan Flagler. She was, uh, her first husband was Henry Flagler. And um, when he died, and Henry Flagler was connected to John D. Rockefeller, and also Flagler helped develop Florida. Some of you, anyone who's been to Florida, always see the Flagler name there in Florida because he put in railroads, drained the swamps, did a lot of things uh, in Florida. And then he passed away and left his money to his widow, Mary Keenan Flagler. It was, back in those days, it was a hundred million dollars, but in today's monetary, it was about two billion dollars mm -hmm. that he left her. Well, she then married a guy by the name of Robert Worth Bingham. You may have heard that name. <laughs> in 1917, a former classmate of hers. There's Robert Worth Bingham. And then after her death, uh, Bingham inherits the money and buys the Courier Journal newspaper. So you can kind of see that connection there. Here's another great partnership, Walter Halderman and George Prentice. They combined their new two newspapers to form the Courier Journal back in uh, 18, uh, I want to say 68, 69, I think is when they uh, merged. 1869, I want to say. Of course, the Courier Journal building there. Uh, two architects, me being an architect, I always like to throw my architectural uh, ancestors into the mix. And uh, this is uh, Arthur Loomis on the left and Charles Clark on the right. They created a lot of landmarks of Louisville. The Speed Art Museum, they, they helped build the Carter Dry Goods, which is now the Science Center, Levy Brothers Building, Conrad Caldwell. <coughs> A number of Carnegie libraries. Lewis Rogers Pete Browning helped start the Louisville Slugger. Uh, he broke a bat and John Bud Hillary was in the stands that day and came down and um, told Browning he could make a bat that won't break and Louisville Slugger has been hitting home runs ever since. There's Browning's uh, gravesite in Cave Hill Cemetery. David Jones and Wendell Cherry were a great partnership. They uh, bought a nursing home back in 1962, I believe. It still exists, by the way, out on Bardstown Road. And they transformed that into the Humana Company. And Wendell Cherry primarily was responsible for helping build the Kentucky Center for the Arts. And David Jones for the uh, 21st Century Parks at Floyd. Parklands and Floyd's Fork. So they were both great partners and built great businesses and did a lot of good for the city of Louisville. Muhammad Ali and Lonnie Ali. I took that photograph there in the lower right hand corner. I was there at the announcement when they were doing the uh, uh, Ali Center. I think that was in 2001 or 2002. And Muhammad Ali was partying the crowd in this restaurant that he made the announcement. It was like partying the Red Sea. It was packed with a lot of folks there. Muhammad came through the crowd and it kind of broke apart. And I'm standing right there. And I told my wife, who was just off to the right, I said, hey, I want to get a picture of you with Muhammad Ali. So right when I went to snap the photograph of him shaking my wife's hand, he turned and gave me that look. He always knew where the camera was, the <laughs> Muhammad Ali. Uh, the Geens family, uh, Edwin, Edwin and Mary Jo Geens. Does it, was in, anyone here today a school teacher? School teacher. Have you heard of the Geens Foundation? These are the Geens. The and so where did the Geens come up with their money for the $50 million that's in uh, foundation for Jefferson County Public Schools? Where did that money come from? Well, the Geens were in a candy company. It was called Braddis and Geens. You may never have heard of Braddis and Geens candy because you've heard of M&M &M and Mars and 
um, Three Musketeers or whatever, because we've heard a lot of different candy companies, but you've probably never heard of Braddis and Gaines. Well, anyways, they bought a uh, sugarcane plantation down near New Orleans uh, to help manufacture their candy. Uh, it's called Gaines, Louisiana. It still exists there today. But out one day, they were looking for some food, and up through the ground came a bubbling crude. <laughs> oil oh, they, oh, they found oil on their sugarcane plantation oh, down in Louisiana, <laughs> and voila, you got $50 million or more for Jefferson County Public Schools. So that's the Gaines family. And one of the last but not least, I want to get into our uh, horse racing folks here. Uh, Aladar and Affirmed. Uh, that's they were a, a classic horse racing duel. It is said that they were the horse racing's greatest rivalry. They met like 19 times on the racetrack, and I think Affirm won most of those races. Uh, I know that Affirm won the Kentucky Derby, the Preakness, and the Belmont, and Aladar was second every time. It was the first time, I believe, and the only time that the same two horses came one, two, in those three uh, uh, races. But anyways, that firm and Aladar. And last but not least, I want to leave you with this. The, the dueling uh, jockeys in the 1933 uh, Derby, uh, they were fighting as they came down the home stretch there. Broker's Tip versus Head Plate. I think Broker's Tip was the winner. Don't, don't uh, bet on that, but I think that was the correct horse, but yeah, they were dueling as they came down the, uh, the stretch. And that's that. That's famous. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.